Hey guys, thanks for joining. This is Shogun 2. I'm going to talk as quickly as I can, and I'm going to give you every little bit of information that I have to make sure that you can dominate on Realm Divide. And yes, this is George. He'll be joining me. Today we're playing Shogun 2, and my purpose today is to teach you how to get to Realm Divide with minimal effort and how to actually enjoy the game. If you find it kind of frustrating, or if you're not that good of a player and you've just kind of given up on it, I want to teach you how to enjoy the game like I do. You will need this. I have almost 800 hours in this game, and I've found it very difficult in the beginning to win uh, so at this point I am just going to talk as I play and kind of do a speed run now I have edited this video for time I didn't want you to have to sit through an hour or two hour video just to get the tips you need I've tried to cut this down as short as I can so that you can just see within 20 minutes half an hour uh, how to actually do this if you need to get a full walkthrough on what exactly I do because maybe you get a little bit of the way or maybe you get all the way to Realm Divide and everything comes crumbling down and it frustrates you. I've heard a lot of that in chats where um, people say, you know, Realm Divide's impossible. It's so hard to win. Uh, everybody turns against you. And it just seems so unfair. But that's life. So let's jump into it. Right now, I'm taking over our neighboring province. I've started as the Shimazu. If I said that right, I'm, if I didn't say that right, I'm sorry. Um, and I just want to bring attention to the fact that these katana warriors are one of the best warriors, in my opinion, as far as your everyday troops. So you want to have a lot of them. You always want to have some spear infantry because I like to have, you know, a, a little bit of a, a base of them in the beginning and less as I go on and on. I like to have more katana troops. The spears are good for horses and just generally holding up infantry lines so you can get other units around them. I like to make pincer or flanking maneuvers. Uh, and if you've read The Art of, Art of War, this game is basically that book in a game. So... You want to try and trick your opponents. You want to try and outmaneuver them. And in battle, defensive positions, in my opinion, are always the best. So letting them attack you in a castle or... If you're on a battlefield, you know, making your line... This is just all my opinion, too. So, you know, if you have a better way of doing it, by all means. But you're probably not watching this video. So... I like to make my line as wide as possible. Uh, if I have more troops, I like to try and get around the side. So engaging your front units with the spear infantry, lower infantry, get them tied up. Right? So when you've got troops that clash together, they get tied up. They can't just easily run away when they're fighting other units. So you want to tie those units up. And at the same time, with impeccable timing, swing around the sides and get them from behind whether it's horse units whether it's any units whatsoever um they're gonna route they're gonna run they're gonna break down and basically this game is surrounded for by a system of the units get scared the units can run away and once they do that it's open season on just hunting them down and eliminating them and I advise you do that too. When you're in a battle, you don't want to let a lot of survivors go. As inhumane as that seems, you are in total war. So eliminating your enemy's ability to recoup and re-attack is vital. 
Also, you never want to spend your entire funds, other than the exception of maybe at the beginning of the game, on your troops. You need to have some excess money building up throughout this game to build up each economy in each city that you're working on, or that you capture. And if you do this, by the time you get to where I need you to be, your economy is going to be so strong that even when they declare realm divide and maybe cut down your trade, maybe, you know, all your all your trade allies go, your ships, anything that makes you money outside of your direct influence in the country will be cut. So what I'm trying to say is, is get your economy to the point. I like to build up to about 200,000 minimally in my bank with a full built economy before I fully declare realm divide. And you can find that out if you go down to your, uh, your, the bottom button there right below that one. Um, and it will show you a bar on how much until you're basically declared war on the Shogun and he finds your power to be too great. So one advice with that is the reputation of your sh of your Shogun or of your, sorry, Daimyo, your leader, um, plays a huge role in that. So as you get more respect, it will increase your ability to make better trade deals and have better relationships with other factions. But it also puts up the heat on the Shogun against you. So you want to try and get a little bit, you know, you want to get some respect on your leader. But not, don't fill it right up. Because that will limit how many provinces you can hold until they declare war. So if I had a high respect, it might be 15 provinces and they may declare realm divide on you. And you can always watch on the bar. So you can get up to like a sliver left and just not have realm divide you can just play out and, and build up your economy okay so you don't want to get your respect level way up you want to get you want to keep it you know 75 percent and i find when i do this i can get about 15 to 17 provinces build up my economy, build up my strength, get all your troops on the front line. As you see, I'm using a province, which in my opinion is pretty easy. I'm on one side of the map. So as I conquer, all most of my troops can be on a front line. And my ships can kind of block any ships that are coming from the east in this situation. If you're, say, Date, and you're up in the kind of north or east, whatever you want to call it. The way I'm looking at it, it's east. Um, then you're going to do it the opposite way and you're going to want to get all your troops to the front line. That's kind of how this game is. If you try to have your troops spread out, you're going to probably lose because they build up armies and they will hit you in, in your weakest spot right on the front line. So be prepared for that. This game is huge into a little bit of diplomacy, some warfare, some trading, economy. You have to balance all of these things. You can't do combat really well and win this game because you could win every battle but if you don't have the money to support your troops you're gonna lose if you don't have the money to build the buildings to get better troops you're gonna lose so i like to pick one you know if you have to build troops in other provinces do it i mean you got to do what you got to do but i like to make kind of a solid set of rules that in this situation, our starting province has a blacksmith, which I turn into an ar uh, a weapon a math master weaponsmith is the main goal. And one thing that can really help you on this is adding things like an encampment. And you research that. It's in Bashudo. Um, you add an encampment in there with a sword school, uh, stables. And then eventually when you build up your province big enough, you'll get, uh, you can build up another building. I usually pick um, whatever building it is to make spear guys. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of what I like to do. And if you build the encampment, you can upgrade 
certain things. Like if you're in one where at the top of this little continent there's a there's a province that allows you to build buildings for accuracy. So you'd want to build like a hunting lodge there. And if you've got the one in your main troop province, like with a blacksmith, I like to pick jujitsu dojo because that does an extra point to their attack. So you've got uh, an, a weapon smith and you've got the jujitsu dojo. Those make a powerful combo together. That will really upgrade your troops to the next level. Right, makes them stronger and you like to build up uh, their rank, you like to build up their weapon ability and their fighting ability. So you can have troops and improve their ability. A lot of people that are just starting this game out might not know that. You think as a troop is a troop is a troop. No, they gain experience. They gain. You can make them have better weapons, and you do that through upgrading your buildings and having certain buildings that are only in in certain locations on this map, like blacksmith. Um, find out where they are. You got to play the game. You got to find out where they are, and then plan your attack on your next round. So sometimes it may take a little bit of losing in order to win. So I'm working my way up, right? Capturing these things, I'm playing a political game. You don't want to declare a war on everybody. You don't want to be fighting wars on multiple fronts. So, uh, you know, get creative with it. If you've got to use um, spies or agents, it's crucial. And if you're not using them, put them into a province so they can level up slowly. Because later down the road, you're really going to need them. Oh, and if I had to pick one thing to upgrade above all else in the beginning, farms. Sometimes you got to work on the farm level. It's on the right-hand side of your research skill tree. Sometimes I bounce. I get one or two tier, and then I bounce over, and I get a little bit of like attack or defend. And then I'll go back. But your main goal is to get... Um, farming done because if you upgrade farms that's going to be your main source of income trading trade routes all of that is secondary to farming because once everything shuts down that's how you're going to maintain your your uh your funding i also like to eliminate any buildings that have the christian religion i'm not against christianity but in this game it was horrible it will cause riots uh it's good to take that down right away so you want to burn any buildings with that little red icon on it that shows that it's a Christian building, sometimes ports, sometimes they have churches in them. Very minimal in this game. Most people are in the, sh the Buddhist uh, religion. So if you want to not worry about rebellions constantly, you're going to have to destroy any Christian buildings and be really harsh on that. I also don't like to accept any Western help like for guns and all that, as appealing as it may seem. I don't find those troops to be all that useful. You know, having some really highly trained... This is a part now where I've taken uh, my province and I moved over to the little island there because I don't want them attacking me during the main battle. And then I brought my troops back to my main continent and we're, we've worked our strength up to the top. This is a good position to be in for... Build up your strength, build up your economy a little bit. As you can see, I've got a lot of money, and I'm making a lot of money average on turn. So this is a good time where I figured, felt, you know, maybe I start attacking, or if you don't want to do a direct attack, use your agents to destabilize regions and create rebellions. Uh, monks are great for this. And if you do that, you do get a little bit of points lost reputation with that clan, but... Rebellion takes it over, and you can legally walk in there and take it without actually starting an outright war with them. So this can be key if you're not really too... Like right now, I've got a lot of money, I've got a lot of power, so if they did declare war on me, it's not the end of the world. I've got my secondary island, I'm ready to make my forward push. So here we go. I think I click on one of these guys and show you what kind of units I'm building. Yeah, so I'm just showing you here. This is where you want to go. I think in this playthrough I just declare war on them. I think I'm pretty ready at this point. 
I feel strong. Lots of time. I mean, you have to remember, too, you want to spend most of your the time limit that you have on your game. Like, I think it's up to year 1600. Still have, like, almost 40 years left. So just remember, once you've built up your strength and once you start making your attacks, things will happen quickly. I push fast. And the only thing that slows me down is just waiting for, you know, waiting a couple turns, maybe leaving a couple troops behind for... Uh, to settle down rebellions and to quell that. You don't want to be losing provinces behind you as you're moving forward. So, but you do want to hit hard and fast when you're ready. That's the prominent phase. Once that bar fills up, they di realm divide happens. So don't let that bar fill up until you're ready. Definitely assign roles to your generals, people that you're going to trust. Gives you little bonuses. As you can see, I own three trade routes there. There is Kyoto. That's where we want to attack and capture. Seems like a far away, but once you've got the troops, the manpower, and the strength, nobody's going to stop you from getting there. And I find I leave very skeleton crews on this island here if I ca if I capture it because nobody really invades it. And if they do, I'll just build up troops there fast because I've got the money to do it. Now I've positioned ships around a few of these cities so that I can hit them real fast and hard. As you can see, they were not ready. This is a bit of a sneak attack. Uh, don't always have to play like that if you don't want. I just thought this would be the most effective way to just eliminate and move and show you how you can dominate in this game. If you really take your time and, and you like tinkering, you can dominate. And then I go back home and I build up. See, I've got really wicked troops that are very well trained. And I can just build them there and send them up and ferry them over. No problem. So if I need reinforcements, I build highly trained reinforcements. And the attack begins. So as you can see, they offer little resistance. And by the time I've taken three or four of their provinces, that's that would be pretty crippling. I'm hurting their economy. I'm hurting... I see there I had some backup troops. Don't want to take away from your uh, force. And you want to try and have as many groups as you can. Use your spies to spy ahead. To see dangers incoming so you can prepare. That's the key to the game, knowing, seeing through the fog of war, knowing when your enemy is going to attack and being able to prepare. Knowledge is power. And once you know the basics of this game and you know kind of what you can do, you can play, you can have fun, and you can get to tweaking. Read every bonus, read everything, see what works with your playstyle. Honestly, my, my opinion is the Katana Samurai are some of the best core units you want to build up to having. I would rather have less of them than more of anything else because... You know, but it's good to have, you know, some some spear troops for the horses uh, and to tie up just random units. If you're tying up units, you can use the Katana Samurai to sweep around behind or charge from front or both and really put a hurt on your enemy. And having less of your army die through every fight will keep you being able to push, as I'm showing here. They're not even slowing me down. And then as it kind of gets up to the capital there in the middle, 
all your troops can kind of converge. And then any attacks they're really throwing at you, you've got three or four big groups of guys. You know, you could have 6,000 freaking troops there by then. And what are they going to do? They may throw a few legions at you that you will take down. You can sim those battles at that point. I mean, if you want to. Because you will just be so... You will have outmatched them and outmaneuvered them so bad. They won't know what hit them. So... My advice to be to you is to get to this point, around this point here, and make sure, like, my account, I have almost $200,000 there, okay? Build up your troops. Build up what you think is going to be strong enough, and maybe have some troops in reserve, and start pushing. I like to have two groups, two full armies on the top and the bottom as I'm moving through here. This is a very narrow uh, corridor. So, try to have at least two, two full armies on the top and bottom so you don't get um, overwhelmed, because they will try to attack you with a couple armies. And if you only have one army, you may be outnumbered and they may stop you. And I don't like losing full armies. I don't lose full armies in this game. See, I'm carelessly just kind of throwing one army up there. And, you know, it's... This is just me being quick and cocky, but uh, definitely have two on the top, two on the bottom. If you're playing as the Date or somebody on the East Coast there, um, it's a little bit more difficult because you've got more wide terrain. I think there's about three points coming down from Date, uh, so you have to keep that in mind. If you're in a wider piece of territory, you're going to have more land to defend. So spies are going to become crucial in knowing. It is dangerous to be the tallest tree. But if you like this video, I thank you for making it this far if you did. It must be really boring to somebody who doesn't isn't into this sort of game, but I love it. It's been so much fun. I've played almost 800 hours of it, and I hope that this helped you and that you can find enjoyment playing the game as well.